In this video, we're going to begin to take a look at the polar save file and the polar dump file. Both of these files are ways to store your data after performing an analysis in XFOIL. This series is brought to you by the Science of Flight, helping you take your aerospace engineering skills to the next level. Let's get to it. Before we take a look at the polar save and polar dump files, let's have a quick review on what a polar plot is. XFOIL will actually plot several polar plots together, and I covered the basics of plotting these polars in an earlier video, so go ahead and check that out. The first polar plot, the one here on the left, the drag polar, is the coefficient of drag versus the coefficient of lift. If we know our coefficient of lift, we can estimate our coefficient of drag. The lift polar is the coefficient of lift versus the angle of attack. This is useful if we know our angle of attack and we're wanting to know what the lift coefficient at that angle of attack is, but it also lets us know the lift curve slope, the stall angle, max coefficient of lift, the angle of attack of zero lift, then there's the moment polar. This is the moment coefficient versus the angle of attack. The idea being if you know your angle of attack, you can figure out what your moment coefficient is going to be. And then here on the right, we see the transition plot, which is just showing for the upper and lower surface where the flow transitions from laminar to turbulent in respect to the location of the cord. In the video I did, on polar plot basics, I will go through a step by step on how to create these polars. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see that in the previous video, the polar save and polar dump files deal with step seven when we're toggling on the polar accumulation. In this step, it actually prompt us for the file name of both the polar save and the polar dump file. Since at that time we were not interested in actually creating these files, we just wanted XFOIL to save the points that we were creating. We went ahead and just hit enter or return without specifying a file name. And so what that did is that it turned on the polar accumulation without actually creating the polar save file or the polar dump file, or setting it up to automatically save the points to these files. If we would have specified a file name, it would have created the file and saved data to it. So that's the first thing about both the polar save and polar dump files is that they are optional. We don't actually have to use them when we are creating polar plots. Some other information we get about the polar save and polar dump files in this step is that if you look there, when we first turned on polar accumulation, it told us that polar one newly created for accumulation. While we're running XFOIL, we are actually able to create multiple polars and have them saved in the memory. So if this was not our first time turning on polar accumulation, it would have incremented up and would have let us know polar 2 was newly created or polar 3 was newly created or polar 4 was newly created. And when you do that, it's going to, as you see on the line below that, save in the airfoil that was used when creating that polar. Now there's a reason for this. If you change what airfoil you're using or the name of the airfoil you're using, or if you change the flow parameters, right, the Reynolds number, Mach number, then you have to create a new polar file. So let's briefly introduce what these files are and what some of the data they contain is. To create a polar save file, in step seven of the previous video, you would have had to enter in the desired file name we want to give to the polar save file and hit enter when it asked for it. 
by providing the file name, we are telling Xfoil to not only create the file, but also to automatically store the polar data into this file. Now if the file name that you specify already exists, Xfoil will go ahead and automatically start adding the extra polar points that you run your analysis at, at the end of this file, if two conditions are met. The first condition is that the airfoil name needs to be the same, and the second condition is that the flow parameters have to be the same. If those two conditions are met, when you run your analysis, the data points will be automatically added to the end of the existing file. Now if it already exists and these aren't the same, then you're going to see a message pop up from Xfoil letting you know that there's an issue with saving the polar with that file name. And this file that it creates is going to be saved in the same folder location as the Xfoil application that you're running. So wherever you clicked on the xfoil.exe to open and run xfoil is where it's going to save this polar save file. On the right, I have an example of a polar save file. You'll see that it has a header with some information in it, like the airfoil name, the analysis type, and I have a video coming out about this type in the near future. And then you see some of the flow parameters there as well. Now below the header, you'll see some columns with the data points that it saves. We see that it has our angle of attack, our coefficient of lift, it has our coefficient of drag. The polar save file actually stores two coefficient of drag terms. It has the total viscous coefficient of drag, or CD, but it also has the coefficient of drag due to pressure. You can actually use both of these to determine what the missing coefficient of drag term is. That would be the coefficient of drag due to the skin friction by remembering that the coefficient of drag due to pressure, CDP, was calculated from the total coefficient of drag minus the skin friction coefficient of drag. You also see there the moment coefficient and the transition locations for the upper and lower surface. Now this is a TXT file, so I open it up here in Notepad. You can also use Notepad++, Microsoft Word, anything that opens a TXT file. That's all the data that a polar save file contains. One of the key differences between a polar save file and a polar dump file is that the polar save file saves just the data it needs to recreate the polar plots. The polar dump file will save the information it needs to rebuild the polar as well. However, it will save all of the data for those points. That's why it's called the dump file. It's just dumping out everything it has for those points into the dump file. And we'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide. However, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about how the polar save file is used. The polar save file is useful not just for saving away the results you got from creating the polar plots, but it's also really useful in transferring data either to other people or to another software like Excel or MATLAB if you were wanting to do additional plotting or analysis on the data points. You can also use the file with the pplot.exe application that comes with xfoil. You'll see it right there in the same folder with the xfoil.exe. This pplot.exe is designed to take this polar save file and be able to recreate the polar plots so you don't have to come back into xfoil and redo your analysis. Most often you can get away with just creating the polar plots in xfoil and taking a screenshot and saving that in as your results without having to actually create a polar save file or a polar dump file. Now a, uh, a quick note while I remember, xfoil is able to do everything that the pplot.exe does so you don't actually have to use that to recreate the polar plots. You can do it in an xfoil as well. I'll probably go ahead and create a couple videos just showing you how to use it, but you probably won't touch it a whole lot. The polar dump file is actually pretty similar to the polar save file, 
For instance, if we wanted to create a polar dump file, we just have to specify the file name that we're wanting and it will automatically create the file and automatically save all of the data into the file as we're running our analysis. If the file already exists and has the same airfoil name and flow parameters, then it'll just go ahead and add on the extra data points onto the end of the file. And of course, if those aren't the same, then it will prompt you that you have an issue. The polar dump file is also saved in the same location as your xfoil.exe application. Now, one of the differences between the polar dump file and the polar save file is that the polar dump file is not a TXT. So if you try and open it up in Notepad or Notepad++, you're just going to see a bunch of random gibberish. Now one of the implications of this is that transferring data with the polar dump file is extremely difficult, which means that it is not used for sending your data to MATLAB or to Excel or to another coworker like the polar save file is. Another difference is that the polar dump file saves a lot more of the data than the polar save file. As you can see here on the right, it contains some similar information as the polar save file there. You see the angle of attack, you see some coefficient of lifts and drags and moments, but it has some additional information. This screen, by the way, is taken from the pxplot.exe. And if you look at some of the plots that it is able to create from just the polar dump file itself, towards the bottom of that screen, you'll see that it has the ability to create many different plots. So what is the polar dump file used for? Well, first you can use it with this pxplot.exe. That application is in the same folder as your xfoil.exe and the pplot.exe that we talked about on the previous slide. The difference being that the pplot application has a GUI and this doesn't. So if you're having trouble opening it, it's because you need to run this application using the command prompt. And I'll have videos covering this in the future. So if you save away a polar dump file, you can just reload it into XFOIL and plot everything in there. Or you can use this streamlined plotting software with the polar dump file. The only other reason I can think of using the polar dump file, and I'll be honest, I don't really use this myself. I usually just use the polar save file would be to create a backup in the event of XFOIL shutting down prematurely without you having the chance to save away your data. In order to keep these videos in more bite-sized portions, we'll cover more about polar save and polar dump files in a future video. And that will cover other things you need to know when dealing with these polar files, like loading data back into XFOIL from these files, or saving additional data out into the files, or perhaps saving your data to a file if you forgot to specify a polar save file. So look out for that one. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. May your bubbles be small, your flow stay attached, and your drag remain low. I'll see you in the next video.